Greetings once again. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue with our teaching today. We're going to introduce you to a concept called the process of salvation. This is going to be part one. We want to put some emphasis on process today rather than individual events because I want you to collectively see on an integrated basis all the things that are involved in our salvation are our redemption, okay? So we're gonna go through all of the steps involved in this introductory. I'm gonna start from each phase. So it's a growth phase, a victory phase, a transformation phase, and then we're gonna talk about eternal, or eternity in time. Uh, we start out, we're born in sin, so we're slaves to sin, okay? And we're on the common grace because we're non-Christian. And then we're, we're going to transition to the lake of fire if there's no decision for faith in Christ in time. This event happens under time, okay? Because time is a subset of eternity. I want you to understand that. Time is a subset of eternity. So this, 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 this base condition that we're talking about here, we are slaves to sin. We're non-Christians destined to the lake of fire. But we're going to talk about how Christ delivered us out of this condition if we place our faith in him. All right? So step one, coming out of this condition, we have to be born again. The scripture that supports this, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So look at this step one. We have to have the conversion. We have to be born again. So here we're babes in Christ. We just got born again. We call that a strategic victory in the victory phases, okay? This is conversion. We're born again because we placed our faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We have imputed righteousness. We credit it with imputed righteousness. You know we've talked about this concept in our teaching. This, this event has to happen in the process of time, time being a subset of eternity, right? So we move to step two, all right? Sanctification, sanctification, John 17, 17, sanctify them through truth, all right? Thy truth, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. This is step two. As we grow in sanctification, we build capacity righteousness, okay? We're growing in grace and holiness. This is a tactical victory. While the strategic victory is one decision we make to place our faith in Christ, a tactical victory is many decisions daily that we have to make as we go through this process of spiritual warfare. The sanctification process sets us apart for the work of God. This event also happens in time also. So we are sanctified through thy truth. The word is the truth. So as we grow in the word, we develop in the sanctification process, we develop capacity righteousness. This is a tactical victory also. Step three is death. Death being the separation the separation of the spirit and soul from the body. We have to take off corruption to put on incorruption. We have to understand that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So in this step three, it's death. Our scriptures are Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and what comes short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
So in this step, separation of the spirit and body, separation of the spirit and soul from the body, because we have to shed our corruptible bodies to put on our incorruptible body. So we go through what's called this interim state once we leave time and go into eternity. We're going to talk about this interim state that we're in before we get our glorified bodies, all right? The interim state, we're going to use 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. By sight. But we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be what? Absent from the body and what? Present with the Lord. So when this death event takes place, all right, we transition to this interim state. We're with Christ Jesus, okay? That is our part of step four. And then the final step in step four, the glorification. Romans 8 and 17, we get our glorified bodies, ultimately in the final stage of this. Let's look at our scripture. And if the children then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so, that we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Be also glorified together. So we're going to be glorified. We're going to get glorified bodies. Let's look farther. Romans 8 and 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of wit, okay, the redemption of our bodies. So let's go back up to our chart. We go from the interim state, then we get glorification, new bodies. This is perfect holiness in the growth phase. And if victory phase is immortality, eternal life, this is our final victory, glorification, new bodies. And we went through the interim state. All of this happens in eternity. So now you have a complete look at the total salvation process, or if you will, the redemption process. Okay. So. You see each of the phases that we go through. I want you to spend some time here so you can understand the total process. All right. Being born again is important. We get imputed righteousness, but we need to understand the rest of the steps that we're going to be going through in time and in eternity so we can see the complete picture. I want to thank you for spending time with us this morning as we continue to grow in grace and knowledge through the teaching. May God bless you till we have another opportunity to bring you a word once again. God bless.